All right, so this little mini lesson is called features of a parabola, graph versus equation. And here's how it's gonna work. I've given you an equation. We've just learned how to graph all of these transformations. Um, so we're gonna begin by graphing this on the grid provided. It'll be a little bit of a review for you. And then we're gonna answer all of these questions based from the graph as well as the equation. I'm gonna show you how to calculate the vertex from the equation and the graph, direction of opening, et cetera. So that way you can choose whichever method you want, like if you like to draw the graph and answer the questions, you can do that. Or if you like to look at the equation and answer the questions, you can do that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, graph this, a little bit more graphing review. Um, so you can go ahead and do it on your own. If you wanna pay attention here, you can as well but I'm just gonna narrate as I go. So I have a horizontal translation five units to the left and a vertical translation six units up, which means my vertex ends up being at negative five comma six. There's a negative sign, which means my parabola is going to look like this. It's gonna be reflected. And there is a vertical compression by a factor of a half. So I'm gonna multiply all of my, uh, my step pattern of one, three, and five by half. Okay, so I'm gonna get a half here. And I'm not showing all my work because we literally just did like six examples of this. So hopefully you guys are pretty familiar with it. Oh, but you know what? If you're watching the recording, you're probably like, what's happening? So maybe I'll, I'll do it on the side. So we have a step pattern of one, three, and five. We're gonna multiply all of that with a half. And then we're gonna get a half here. We're gonna get one and a half here. We're gonna get two and a half here. We figured out the vertex. This is a horizontal translation, five units to the left. This is a vertical translation, six units up. So that's our vertex. Then we go one to the right, down half, one to the left, down a half, one to the right, down one and a half, one to the left, down one and a half. And then do the same thing this time with two and a half and two and a half. And by the way, when the question says include at least five points, it just means like how many, so I have in this question, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven points, but you really just need five. And then of course, arrows on both sides and then label it y is equal to negative a half bracket x plus five squared plus six. So now that we've graphed this graph, we are gonna answer all of these questions based on the graph as well as the equation. So I think this part's kind of cool. Um, you can clearly tell the vertex from this graph is right over here at, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and label it. It's at negative five comma six. Okay, however, you can also figure out the vertex from the equation by looking at this number and this number. And we kind of already discussed this when we, were, when we were doing the other stuff. If you want to figure out the vertex from an equation, you take this number and change the sign. So if it's positive five, you're going to make it into a negative five. And then you take this number and write it as is. So it's just going to be a six, which is exactly what we get from our graph as well. So from a graph, you just read it. And then from an equation, you just take these two numbers, change the sign of this. Okay. What is the direction of the opening in this, in this parabola? Does it open up or does it open down? Okay, we can see that it opens down, but how do we figure that out from an equation? If there is a negative sign in the equation, that parabola is going to open down. If there is a positive sign in the equation, that parabola is going to open up. So we can actually make a little note of that so you guys can always have it. If it is positive, then it opens up. If it is negative, then it opens down. All right, what is the step pattern in this question? Well, we kind of already calculated it over here. So you just take this number and multiply it by one, three, five. So our step pattern for this question is a half, one and a half, and then two and a half. 
So if you didn't have this graph, it wouldn't matter. You just look at the equation, look at this number, multiply one, three, five. Okay, we talked about the axis of symmetry in the beginning, like yesterday, but we haven't really gone over it again. So let's talk about axis of symmetry now. Remember, the axis of symmetry is the line that splits the parabola in half. Can you clearly see where the axis of symmetry is in this graph, Nirmatha? Yeah, so let's go ahead, use a ruler and draw a line that goes down, make it a dashed line, and split your parabola into a half. And the equation for it is it's going through the x axis at negative five. So the equation would be x is equal to negative five. Okay, so one more time, axis of symmetry splits your parabola in half. Okay, but how do we figure out the axis of symmetry from the equation? So again, another cool trick. Um, you can look at the graph and figure it out. But if I give you an equation, you don't have the graph for it. Here is how you do it looking at the equation. You look at whatever is inside of the bracket and you set it equal to zero. So in this case, we have x plus five inside the bracket. So I'm gonna take x plus five and I'm gonna set it equal to zero and then I'm gonna solve. So I'm gonna move the positive five to the other side and it's gonna be a negative five. And you're gonna notice that's exactly what we got from our actual graph itself. So if I give you an equation and I ask you for the axis of symmetry, you take whatever is inside of the bracket. So in this case, it's x plus five. You set it equal to zero and then you solve. So you move the five to the other side and that is what gives you your axis of symmetry. Does that make sense? x plus 5 is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 5. Okay, how about maximum or minimum? Again, that's one of those things we talked about in yesterday's class. Does this graph have a maximum value or a minimum value? Angelique, it definitely has a maximum value. How can you tell by looking at the graph? Because the vertex is as high as possible. How can you tell by looking at the equation? Well, whenever you have a negative sign, that is going to mean it is a maximum. And if it has a positive sign, that is gonna mean it has a minimum. You don't have to memorize that. Honestly, you can just sketch it quickly. So if it's a negative, just imagine the problem being upside down. And so the vertex is as high as possible. Okay, now see this part where it says value? How do we figure out the value of the maximum or minimum? Well, here's what I do. I identify where it's highest. I make a dashed line all the way to my y axis. And then I look at whatever number it's going through, which in this case is going to be a six. So our maximum value is going to be at y is equal to six. I'll repeat that one more time. We know it's a maximum because the vertex is as high as possible. Where is it a maximum? You look at your vertex, you'd make a dash line all the way to your y axis and whatever number it passes through, that is the maximum value. Y is equal to six. Now you wanna know a really cool and easy way to figure it out from the equation. The maximum value is just this number over here. So this positive six tells me what my maximum value is. Okay, almost done. Let's keep going. How do I figure out the, um, how do I figure out the y-intercept? Well, this is kind of like what we did for a line. We're gonna let x equal to zero and we're gonna solve. So really it's just an algebraic method. Go ahead and try to solve it. I'm gonna go to the side over here. I have y is equal to negative a half. And then I have zero plus five squared plus so in order to find the y-intercept, you let your x value be zero and you solve. So I'm gonna have negative a half, and this is 25 plus six, negative 25 plus 12 over two, and this is gonna be negative 13 over two. 
So just how we used to do it for a line, when I gave you an equation of a line and I said, what is the X or Y intercept? You either let Y equal to zero, you let X equal to zero and you solve. So this coordinate right here would be zero comma negative 13 over two. That's what I'm gonna put over here. Zero comma negative 13 over two. By the way, could we have figured this out from our graph? Yeah, we could have, but it would not have been very accurate because if you take a look at your graph, like we're sketching it, it's not the most accurate. So the best way to figure out the y-intercept is just from the equation, let x equal to zero and then solve. For the x-intercept, we're just going to be looking at it from a graph if it's obvious. Um, in this example, is our x-intercept obvious? Like, can we clearly see what it is? Not really. It's not that obvious. So this is kind of a bad question. I'm going to ignore this one because whenever I do give you this, it will be quite obvious. Like, it'll pass through points really well. But in this question, I'm just going to ignore that because we can't really see it. And that's it. Go ahead and try example number two yourselves with your partners. I'll put up the answers. And then the rest of the time is yours to do the equations and the graphs for every question, uh, which we'll take up tomorrow. Pause recording. Enjoy. This that. All right. So for this question, I am going to graph it first. My vertex is going to be five units to the right and then down 10 units. And then my step pattern is going to be um, one, three, and five times three times three times three. So it's going to be three and nine and 15. So one unit to the right of three. One unit to the right of nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's probably all I can fit on this graph. Okay, so vertex is gonna be five comma negative 10. <coughs> okay, and then the parabola opens up. The step pattern is three, nine, and 15. Smear? Yep. Like, is it only the last number in the equation? Because it wasn't a, if there wasn't a case of, like, a case of that number, it the last number. Yep, the maximum or minimum value is the last number. Yes. So not, just, like, not just this equation, it's like, even the number. Yep, that's the general rule. Yep, it's a general rule, exactly. So in this case, the axis of symmetry is going to be x is equal to 5, which you can get from there and there. And then this is going to be in minimum uh, y is equal to negative 10. And then for the y-intercept, I'm just going to go to the side. It's going to be y is equal to 3 zero negative five squared minus 10. And you guys, another thing is for the um, y-intercept, it's not practical to try to get it from a graph because then you're making, you're having to extend your graph so much. Like in this case, I end up getting an answer of 65. There's no way we're extending our graph all the way to the number 65. Um, and so that's why for the y-intercept, the best thing to do is just calculate it. 
Whoa, what happened here? <clears throat> and then X intercepts not very obvious from the graph. So I'm just going to ignore this question for now. Let me know when you're done so we can just take it up and then uh, we'll work. Sorry, we just went over this and I wasn't recording it. In this question, I've said the X intercepts are not obvious because they're not like clearly going through stuff, but we can estimate them if you guys wanted. So if you wanted, you could take a look at your graph. Like in my graph, I have one X intercept that's going through three comma zero. And I have another one that's going through approximately maybe 7.5 five comma zero. So you can go ahead and take a look at your graph. All of ours will be different because we're sketching them and just see approximately where is your X intercept. I will make sure to always give you X intercepts that are like going through whole numbers. But if I wanted to estimate or if I said, go ahead and estimate it, then this would be valid because I am kind of just estimating where my graph is going through the X axis. Is yours approximately around mine as well? It should be a, around the same number, maybe not exact though. Yep. Uh, see how it's going up by twos though? There's a six and then a seven and an eight. My line seems to be like, oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, you're absolutely right. I thought we were going up by twos. This should be, it's closer to 6.5. Yeah. Thank you. Where? either estimate it or it'll be perfectly accurate but we are going to learn later on uh, how to calculate it like perfectly you go y equals zero and then you factor it yeah Harushi? i mean i guess we shouldn't leave it empty i guess just estimate it as best you can Then there is no, yeah, then you just, guys, I want to give you one last question. I just thought of it. I know you're probably so sick of hearing me talk. What if I gave you a question like this? Y is equal to negative 0 0.0086 and then X minus 5.2 squared um, plus 198 over two. Okay, clearly this is a crazy question, right? Uh, it's just absolutely insane. I would never, I mean, you could graph it, but I'm not gonna ask you to graph it or anything, but we can actually answer all of the questions based on this crazy equation. So let's try it. Um, what do you think is the vertex in this question? Safir? Uh, uh, yeah. So even though the numbers don't really make sense, they're crazy. The vertex is just this number, change the sign, and then this number, put it over here, okay? Um, which direction is this graph gonna open? So is it gonna open upwards or downwards? Angelique? Yeah, because it's a negative, we know the graph is gonna look something like this. So it's pretty obvious that the graph is gonna open downward. Okay, we don't have to worry about the step pattern. I wouldn't ask you for that but we can figure out the axis of symmetry. So what is the axis of symmetry? I don't know how to spell symmetry at all. S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-Y. -M -M -E yeah, what do you guys think is the axis of symmetry in this question? Finish this off. You guys, what would be the axis of symmetry in this question? Sapir? Oh, you're really close, not quite. Yep, Sohan? Yeah, it would be X is equal to 5.2 because what you do is you take what's inside the bracket, you set it equal to zero and you solve. So it would be X minus 5.2 is equal to zero. X is equal to 5.2. Okay, uh, and then the last question I'm gonna ask is, is this a maximum or is this a minimum? Um, Najib? This is definitely a maximum. And how did you know that? 
because it's opening downwards and we can even know which exactly where on the y axis it, it is going to be a maximum what's the value that it's going to be at and tell me how you would know so it's a maximum for sure but where is it going to be did you close not quite i want an exact number krishna what do you think Yeah, so remember the maximum or the minimum value is just this number over here. And then you just write maximum or minimum. And that's it. I'm not going to really ask you for anything else. Stop recording. But if you are wondering,